This is the uh, Sewer and Water Commission uh, of the Town of Walpole meeting on July 25th, 6.30 p.m. We have in attendance uh, William Abbott, Jeffrey Fisher, and Pradeep Michelle, and myself. And I think Patrick may be missing tonight. So we have, I think, uh, four voters. Why don't we, uh, you know, I guess we can pass the abatements around well. You want to start with the superintendent's report? Sure. So as far as leaks, it was not too much activity since the last meeting. On the 4th of July, we had a minor service leak on Mylod uh, Street. And on the same day, we had a hydrant get hit on Johnson Drive, uh, both taken care of early, you know, quickly. This morning, we had MDI hit the water main around 3 a.m. this morning on Main Street. It was is it's isolated right now for repairs. There was only one resident that was affected, and they're on a bypass. MDI will be fixing that tomorrow. The generators for Old Post Road and Washington 6 have been delayed in delivery until the second week of September. Um, really, the only thing that's left to do for them once they arrive is hook up the gas lines, put more load tests, and the startup, and those will be complete. The Eleanor Road sewer station rehabilitation is scheduled to start on August 1st, and projected completion is uh, September 9th, a little over a month. That's the Eleanor Road sewer station? It's right up here. Off of Common Street. We received another application for the Board of Sewer and Water Commission Secretary position. And um, a question was raised last time about the monthly billing costs for paper versus electronic, how many people use each one. And I would rec make the recommendation uh, that we invite, or the Board invite, either Lisa or Jody or both to answer those questions. I spoke uh, with Lisa. And I think it would be best served if, if they answered that question. Do you have any rough numbers? Rough numbers? No. no. Uh, it's kind of random. I think it changes a little bit month by month. Um, and as far as paper, there's different ways this paper come in. Um, but I think she can explain it a lot better than I could. Okay. Um, another thing that was mentioned was um, applications like drop counter. And I reached out to a vent, the vendor, and they've offered to do a 30 to 60 minute Zoom presentation if the board's interested. So if that's the desire of the board, then I'll get in touch with them and try to set up a date that's convenient for the board. Why don't we just take it? Uh, everybody interested in that? Sure. Yes. So would we do it in person and have them Zoom into here, or how are we doing that? More than likely, it would be Zoom from them to here. Okay. Um, I'll speak with the IT director and see what's the best approach. It's just making, you know, as easy and practical as possible. Okay. So you have to so shift to, to a different room. Yeah, based on his, re his advice and recommendation, if he says it's not that feasible down here because of whatever reason, then we can come back to that and try to find something different. Um, other than that, routine tasks and maintenance can be performed. Okay, thank you. Moving right along. The, uh, I guess we, we have the, the policy review. We're going to do that first, or you want to do the Jarvis Farm application? We can take care of the first one. It's okay. going to be a standard. Uh, All right. <clears throat> Sewer abatement consideration request 7622. Anderson Way. <clears throat> Any comments on this? Based on our past practices, we would uh, abate the uh, sewer charge that represents the water that never went into the sewer. So I'd make a motion to that effect. Good. Is there a second on that? Second. Okay. Question. The, so is it 30 daily average? Because your calculation is She wrote 90 daily average, okay. but it was over three days. So are we abating an additional 180 on top of the 90? Does anyone know? 
I think what it be would be. Or is it 30 daily? What, what, what would you and 90 what is would, the three. Normally, what would you have used? What did you use for those three days and you know make the adjustment? Exactly, and that's one yeah. of my question. 28, 29, minus 90, average daily, the incident occurred over three days. So it should be, if 90 is the average daily, it should be 270 and not subtracting just the 90. So that's my question. I, I don't believe 90 is the daily average, just looking at the numbers roughly. Yeah, um, it didn't make sense to it, me either. Yeah. I didn't calculate them all. And right. So the 90 daily average, I'm thinking that might be the the difference from the average out of the norm, but the way it's written is not not clear here. Yeah. But they're looking at the the overage for that time period to be the 2,739 cubic feet, which resulted in a charge of 266 dollars and 12 cents. Do you do you want to um, do you feel comfortable with that bill? Or do you want to amend your motion to say that? Uh, you move to do the abatement subject to a review of the uh, calculation? I'll, I'll uh, take the amendment to have Scott review the calculations, but it, it is a case of our stand, now, whether that's okay. written clearly. Okay. Um, Agreed. So, all right. So Just we'll confirm the daily average, subtract it by the three days. Please. We'll go over the calculations completely. Right. Okay. So moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Or zero. I'll make a motion we uh, approve the abatements since I just turned them in. Very good. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the abatements? Aye. 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 Four zero zero. Okay, we have now Jarvis Farm application from the Norfolk Aggie Alumni Update. Updated application and event. <laughs> And we, we are we're looking to host a carnival tournament. Um, Jimmy, sure, go ahead. Why don't you come up and introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jean Howe. I am on the executive board for the Illinois Bank. Uh, I work specifically with their finance team. We are looking to host a fundraiser at Jarvis Farm, a carnival tournament to raise funds. We have scholarships that we uh, present to the graduating class every year. Uh, this past year, we gave out seven scholarships. Uh, $3,000 each um, to each of the um, recipients. The scholarships, I use that word loosely, they are um, cash money is given directly to the student, whereas a scholarship is generally given to a college. We give it directly to the student because uh, although many, many students go on to college, there are also several students who go on to start their own businesses, and it's, it's a good startup jump for them, for their own businesses. Uh, the cornhole tournament that we're looking to host, this is our first time doing it, so we are looking to keep our numbers small so that we can grow it over time. We don't want to overwhelm what we're trying to do this first year. So we were hoping for eight to ten teams to show up, so that two people to a team, that would be 16 to 20 people. Um, we would like to host it on Jarvis Farm, uh, but we, are, we also need to find out, I know there's concern about parking, it is sitting on the, the aquifer there. Um, so aside from parking issues, we wanted to get your feedback also on how you feel about um, whether or not we can cater food there, whether we bring in grills and cater or we bring, uh, I'm reluctant to bring in a food truck because there's already parking issues with parking. So just your feedback on whether or not we can do any type of catering there as well. Okay, any, any? When we've had the uh, uh, Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts, so it, it we have done that uh, in the past. What, the food truck? That's what Jeff? It, the, the Boy Scout event's called the Chuck Wagon, and I believe there is vendors that come in to cater for them. Boy Scout, they do, no, they do grilling there, so to grilling is okay. Yeah. I don't know about the food truck. Yeah. You know, so. Well, I know when they had the uh, harvest uh, uh, fair, mm -hmm. there was a food truck. I remember attending one of them. Some, I forget what the food was, but. Okay, so this is 16 to 20 cars and possibly a food truck? Hopefully not that many cars where, I mean, it's judge how many, it's tough to judge how many cars because it is a county school. So people are coming as far away as Braintree, Weymouth, yeah. um, you know, Hopkinton. 
So uh, we would obviously encourage people to um, carpool wherever possible, but we can't dictate how they actually get there. Could, could you tell me um, what is the uh, parameters of when you can have this event? Is it uh, before the end of September or, or is it by September 15th we, or 1st or what? Yeah, we were originally looking at August dates, but having a tough time finding a venue, uh, we pushed out to September. So we, 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 we've been looking at the weekend of September 24, 25, or 23, 24, whatever that Saturday, Sunday is, I think it's the 23rd. Um, just to keep it on a weekend, um, because it, again, it's alumni, we're all old now, we all have families, we all have jobs, so doing it on the weekend is much easier than doing it a weekday or even a, a week evening. So it came up in that, I mean, uh, obviously uh, there's uh, a good relationship between the agricultural school and the town. And we've all been involved with different activities at Aggie School. Uh, I know I ran the Cub Scouts and uh, also Little, Little League at one point. Uh, and um, we, we did compensate uh, the Aggie for the janitorial services. Um, it, it, this isn't really your issue, but we're kind of unorganized because we're not uh, entertain we're not an entertainment venue. Mm -hmm. This board, mm -hmm. it, it, the recreation does is they kind of reach out to the community to to make the town accessible. But uh, we're not really set up. We don't have janitors. We don't have a system for somebody to clean up uh, or to put supplies for bathrooms or put fires out or anything like that. We, just, we that's really not what we do. So there, I guess that we're just concerned of how does that function get fulfilled and who mobilizes to do it? Are your people prepared to, you know, take care of all, all this? Uh, oh, absolutely. For getting getting trash bags and yep. barrels and remove this yep. stuff. Yep. As a as a <clears throat> alumni of the Aggie, we are all very conservative and very mindful. Carry and carry out any trash or anything that's generated while we're there. We take with us any supplies that are needed. We would bring in with us. I hope you and you would bring the trash back. Out oh yeah, with trash you. would be yes. Trash would be yes. <laughs> taken care of, removed from the property. Okay. So I, I would say that, uh, and I'm since, since they run a, a there's a tight time schedule. I'm kind of predisposed to cooperate with them on this, and just as long as she's agreeing that there under no circumstances there probably wouldn't be more than 25 cars there. Is what you're saying, I think. Yes, well that's our intent. Yes, um, we do have an option for I I my the house that I grew up in, although I don't live directly in that house. I do still live in Waffle, but the house that I grew up in is on Old Post Road, which is right across the street. It's the very first house. If we need off-site parking, I can put cars down there in the yard if, if we find that we're getting too many cars coming in. Okay, and someone suggested here that, I think it was Patrick, that uh, it might be preferable to park on the driveway coming in on either side. Is that right? I've heard that recommendation. I don't believe it. Well, I think it was Patrick who made that. If that, so, yeah, we'll park wherever you, you know, any cars that we do bring in, we'll park them wherever you want. Yeah, because, yeah, maybe you give, can give up uh, little cars numbered one through 25 to people. And people that get a car can park in there, the others will park over at the uh, the restaurant parking lot across the street or yeah, elsewhere, yeah, we, we just can, to keep we, the number down. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> And I think in the future, what we're going to do is probably, if, if this continues, we're going to look to have uh, users contribute to a Friends of Jarvis Farm fund so we can move forward on building good a good parking, parking lot yep. there and protecting the resources. Yep. So that's our intent. So it's not to make give you trouble trying oh, to Oh, no, I, and I fully understand that. Yeah. Um, I have, myself personally, I, I mean, I'm a Jarvis. I'm very familiar with the land. I'm very familiar about what's under it and what's on it and what's happening to it, so yeah. Okay. All right, anything else, anybody? All right, you wanna have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, use of the Jarvis Farm for this activity. Okay, second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so we'll plan for that Saturday of the 23rd for September? 
Yeah, you can let Brendan Croak know that, coordinate with him. Okay. And, and bring trash bags with you. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. On this uh, subject here, occasionally we've gotten requests that either came delay, you know, when we weren't meeting in time. If, if it's some group that has been coming before, hadn't been successful, you know, no problems or whatever, could we uh, authorize uh, our uh, superintendent to uh, okay those, since he'd certainly know about any concerns we'd have on dealing with the aquifer? The only thing about that, Bill, I spoke with him today. He's a little bit nervous about it himself. He feels that people are viewing that recreation as kind of a gateway to do these things. Right. And he's not really, doesn't view himself as that. He just views himself as an intermediary that passes an application over to us and that's it. So there's, and I think Scott and I were talking about this, I think the problem is there needs to be some kind of a comprehensive cradle to grave kind of template for this process. That's and right. It, and it's regular. Who, who cleans up? Yeah. Is there a use or not a use of bathrooms? How many cars? And I think until we figure out what we're going to do about the parking lot, if they're going to put any limits, I'd like Patrick to be here. I mean, yeah. maybe a certain number of cars or whatever. I don't think we should think we should try to make it automatic, particularly since recreation, they're, they're not really integrating all the issues. Well, I know that Brendan has been reluctant to give an okay, and that's fine, but it just, over the years, we've had situations where the people aren't aware of how often we meet, it, and um, we end up, uh, you know, with people who are either we can't say yes, someone could do it that we would be have no problem, or they have to change their date or whatever. So that's the only reason. And it would be a good idea to have set a set criteria so that. Um, you would know beforehand, yes, this one is going to be approved. If the commission's available, they can go, you know, do it. But if it's somebody that has been there coming year after year, there's not been a problem, they meet whatever our criteria are, um, can be give the okay. Well, okay, but I, again, I would just say, it isn't quite that simple. There's, I don't want somebody burning the place down. I don't want any fires in any buildings. I didn't know they cooked out there on open pits and so forth, that's news to me. Uh, I don't want any contamination in the in the in the in the, in the septic system out there in the ground. Um, so I, I just think. All right. Make, it, make, I think we need to think about this and have something written up. That's maybe the fire department needs to be informed of. Is it going to be five fires or six barbecues or something going on up there? I don't know. Uh, parking. If there's over 25 cars, maybe the uh, police details needed. I, there just got to be. Maybe we need to part paint out where parking can be and where it can't so we make sure it's not in a threatening area. I mean, they can't okay. just go in there willy-nilly with yeah. cars and park all over and have fires going. And, I mean, that, and, and no one's responsible. There's no... Yeah. The, the fire department's always been made aware of any open fires. <clears throat> so that's and across this is pretty well that the fire. So I think uh, there are a few things on the farm permit application mm -hmm. fire department permission. I guess my thought is, if the board was interested, while we had it on the the agenda, if it's not something that we feel comfortable doing, we can either deal with it at some future time or just stick with what we're doing. So, I, I didn't want to. No, as, as far as the agenda item being policy review with Jarvis Farm, I was expecting that maybe we'd have some sort of draft policy that we'd be reviewing or having input to. I'd, I'd like to see us have dry policy, number of people that are allowed, you know, number of cars that we're comfortable with, where they park, do we allow open fires or not, that's fine, we'll just make a decision on it flat out. And then if Brendan gets an application and meets the criteria, he approves it. If it doesn't, I won't, I only want to see exceptions coming to our board. We don't need to review everything. Brendan does the schedule. You know, uh, let's just, let's just come up with the criteria. Well, I, it, but it's beyond that. It's 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 ultimately our responsibility. If someone got killed up there, the Sewer and Water Commission is the one that's responsible. Not Brendan. Um, <laughs> and I, I, he doesn't see. Him, I talked to him today. He doesn't see himself in that role. He, as far as providing uh, toilet paper and things for the bathrooms and stuff like that, 
That's not their job. They don't perceive that to be. They're not cleaning up. They're not go, supposed to go up there and lock their doors. So the question is, it, this just should just be planned out, Jeff. Not, not, you know, not to be no, making it difficult, but just before we just say, okay, it's it's an open door and go ahead. So yeah, maybe we this, can continue. Yeah, this ca cabins and restrooms are more dangerous than just using an open area. Cabins and restrooms can be you know, destroyed. I think we should, this this form as of now, just say, do you require use of cabin or restroom? We should ask what are the conditions, you know, are they going to pay an extra security deposit or something for not cleaning up or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think there should be ultimately um, some revenue so that uh, if no one else, we can, have, we can request the DPW or somebody to fulfill certain functions and we'll have a, have a hundred dollars an event or something coming into an account that's going to cover that. Uh, we should look to see what that Ebbs Farm charges for the people holding events there. Well, well look what the summer. trustee was a reservation charge for Bird Park. It's mm -hmm. a, they have it all, they have all the picnic benches out there and all the uh, yeah. porta potties and they, she could do it over there but they probably charge 200 bucks or 300 bucks, I don't know. Um, so, so for future discussion. Yeah. Okay. We'll put that on continued, continued uh, discussion item. Now we have uh, correspondence from Bill Abbott. Well, we, uh, as you can see, looking at the <coughs> February through June, we were pumping out more water than we historically had in the past, when at least the last three years, and now, of course, things Things have changed. It's, we're in a drought situation, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see the uh, probably be interesting in July. But we're, since we're three quarters of the way through, but certainly in August, uh, how that will uh, that will go down? I certainly expect it will. Yeah, I don't know what. Obviously, there's a drought. <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to rain tonight, I don't know. So we will be discussing that uh, ahead, isn't it? The drought or water thing, or? No. As far as the one day? Yeah, one day restrictions. Uh, but that's, is the, that's not in our control, is it, Scott? It's, it's, it's part of our water management permit where once we hit that stream flow trigger, uh, we had to limit it to one day per week. That's why now it's, uh, you know, it's on um, Monday and even so Thursday, but even with the restrictions currently in place, they're still using the water. From what I see from the numbers so far, it looks like we're going to maybe be a little bit over from last year. I don't have it all calculated out, but just based on the trend. And, and uh, what, when is it for whole year, or is it reviewed every week? You know, what is the process? It's only during the uh, non-essential outdoor water use restrictions. No, no. Uh, so restriction came because of the drought. Yes. The drought goes away next month. Yes. So the restrictions will go away or will it stay? Um, I believe they will still be in place. Go I back have to two days, right? Yep. What? It go back to two days water. Yeah. Once it goes up to, I believe, either five or six consecutive days, then those restrictions being limited or reduced. So you will we'll be monitoring that. We do. Uh, okay. Yeah. That, that's right. Uh, the reason is that this is a very uh, unique cycle, the one which is happening now. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't know what will be the weather next month. So that's, right. that's a good I think what you're suggesting is that when we go off for the one day, we probably want to let the public know that too and make sure. Yeah. That, that be, yeah. We also want to make sure that we don't jump the gun and as soon as we meet the criteria for going back to two days we jump on that because I don't think we want to get into a situation where it changes every week because if we can't keep track of what the policy is we can't expect the consumers to. The other thing I've noticed in the past is that uh, the water usage climbs in uh, June and into the start of July but once people's lawns turn brown <laughs> <laughs> it starts to come down because people say, I'm just watering straw. And so it's true. Yeah. So 
but th there is problems with people who have the uh, you know the automatic irrigation systems that one now we're asking them to change from either Monday Thursday to Tuesday Friday to you know what Tuesday uh, Thursday uh, or is it Monday and Thursday but for and there's a lot of folks who, who don't know how to change the uh, thing and also, I, I got an email. I saw it listed, certainly the uh, sign boards and um, on our, the town website. Uh, I don't know if there were uh, any other ways that we were doing that I haven't seen. Not right now. What we're doing too is as our um, personnel go out and they, they see people watering, we try to make sure that they're aware of the policy as well. We have handouts that explain that because we don't want to surprise anybody with it. Uh, we want to make sure that they know that um, there's restrictions in place that, you know, we ask for their cooperation. And by, by well, I know I would happen to be talking to Judy in the office and there were over 200 uh, um, excessive water use, which, you know, with the system would think, oh, you've got leaks, but we know you can tell that it's really as a result of uh, people using water, which they shouldn't have been using even without the uh, water ban on uh, over the uh, weekend. So be something we'll have to watch. So are we doing fines, fines and penalties? I get we doing fines and penalties for what we've First we one do. is a warning. Yeah. yeah, like Bill says, the first thing we do is we warn them. And accompanied uh, with the warning is a copy of the policy, just so they have it. And they know exactly what we're talking about. Um, so we don't want to just go right in with a fine. And that's always been the board's policy, let people know that there's, a, there's something in place. Because people make mistakes, too, just to make them aware of what's going on. And these go, go out automatically? Yeah, what? These go out automatically? On the fines, no. No, that, that has to be something that uh, we witness. So department personnel will see it to something that's not in accordance with uh, the, um, the restrictions. They'll stop, they'll knock on the door, depending on what time it is, uh, speak with the resident, make sure that you know that any questions they have get answered. If nobody answers, they'll leave a copy of the violation, usually the first warning, um, somewhere on the door, somewhere they'll notice it, and they'll copy that policy so they can read it on their own. And there's a number on there if they have any questions they can call. Okay, then Bill, uh, the rep, you want to talk about the revenue? Uh, well, we came in with more revenue than expected. It was uh, primarily the usage charges, which sort of matches when you look at the production from uh, February through June being higher than normal. And there were other areas that were, you know, we got less uh, revenue. I mean, on water, new uh, services, that we were budgeting uh, 240000 uh, less than half of that. Um, so, you know, we'll, I'll continue doing uh, that, like I say, I've said in the past. Well, usually get the information by the 10th of the uh, month, both production as well as uh, the revenue. Yeah, there's a good number in the sense, like at least 109% above budget for water and 2% above budget for sewer. Uh, I think I, at least I was worried about sewer. So overall, I think numbers are good. Um, we should be looking for other waste disposal and new service. Please. How, do, how do we explain the delta between water new service and sewer new service? Don't they go hand in hand? Number of customers no. are different. Yeah. No, the people, if you don't have the, uh, not everybody who has water has sewer. So. But everybody who has water has sewer. Everybody who has I'm water, sorry, everybody no, who has sewer, sewer has water. Has water. I would think, but they, they yeah, it's just a huge delta, you know what I mean? Well, the, uh, I think water is what, 3,500 and uh, sewer is 2,300. Okay. So from a dollar standpoint, right, so you're gonna see the, uh, the difference. Yeah. Plus there are wells that figure into that. No, but that's, uh, Pradeep should feel good about that. Yeah, I think the no. finance committee may send you an apology. I don't know. <laughs> no, they, they were. They were I, think you, I think you all will staff an apology. Yeah. <laughs> they try to help Bill. Give them a little credit. Huh? Credit for credit is due. That is true. They're down to. You're going to take some of the bank. Twenty-five uh, days. Uh, the billing gap for the most recent uh, bills that went out. And ten percent. 
person Good. that struggles to the retain earning, the retain earning talk, which took a lot of time. <laughs> Okay, well that's good. Thank you, Bill, for that. It's, uh, we'll uh, continue keep, to keeps, report. Keeps, <laughs> no, you, yeah. it's, uh, no, I uh, use this data. This is good for me. You know, mm. I, I, I can also ask, but you are already all, all doing it, so I rely on your data. It's okay, exemplary, it's exemplary service on your part. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we have old business, final bill process. Well, correspondence three. I just thought that ground folks might level. be interested. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah ground yeah, level. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, we got a graph here. Yeah. That it, um, I went out once we. I heard that we were uh, doing it. I had some historical information that I had uh, done back in the uh, 1990s, and 1995 was a a dry year, and um, I only te looked at Testwell uh, 72, and it was like almost exactly where we were on the uh, um, back in 1995. And all the years, it, uh, it, it does show a sort of a similar pattern that it goes down until uh, you get into September and then the groundwater level starts to go up. But um, during the summer, not only are you dealing with uh, um, the fact that it's warmer, so when it rains, uh, you're going to get ev evaporation. Plants are uh, coming from being dormant. They start using water. It doesn't get a chance to get down into the ground groundwater. And it's only once uh, it starts to get cool that it, it rises up. So I just thought it might be interested to see what it looked like uh, in another year when we uh, were experiencing uh, a drought. Yeah. So. so end of the September, the peak, or, you know, off the peak would be the, the would be a high correlation, as they say. Yeah. Well. <coughs> I, I only periodically go out. At the time, I was going out for uh, four years. I was either going weekly or, or every other week to, to track it, uh, to see. And it was only, from, I was just curious as to what it was, and I saved the information. And so, anyways. And where you got this data for 1995? I, I would go out. Oh, on test well, take the cap off, measure the... This uh, is 1995? 1995 is that, yes. And it just said, well, let me see how it looked like, you know, this past weekend uh, when I went out. Or, well, it must have been by Thursday because I had to send this in. So it was the middle of the week. I just did uh, test well 7 just to see was it worse, better. And it was basically the same as 1995. So. And, and how, how are we measuring? Like, uh, we measure, as far as the morning wells, we measure them weekly. Um, there's one well that's within 100 feet, I mean one observation well that's within 100 feet of the pump station, one that's outside 100. Those are collected every Thursday. Um, so that, And we also have the levels from the pumping stations that are recorded every day that have the pumping water levels if they're running and if the well is off, we have the static levels continuously recorded. The reason I chose these wells is I didn't want it to be impacted by, of course, when you start up the pump, immediately you're going to draw down the groundwater level in the immediate vicinity. These are like 16 and 26, you know, 100 feet away. So if there is even an impact, it's, so, it's going to be so minor. And I suspect that it probably is so far away that there's no impact with, you know, having the wells actually run. So it's really just looking at the groundwater, uh, not impacted by uh, running the wells. Could you put it out on the ch on the uh, map right in the back of you? Oh, where it is? Yeah. Uh, this would be this would be a two and three. Um, line group uh, four. That's where area ten would be, and area uh, of this test well that I use is about uh, half a and then the test well area 10 is right next to where we put that well in, you know, yep. which is the, the case. So it's, as you can see, it's quite a ways. And the other thing I was concerned about is midfield has a couple of wells that are so it's equally distant. Right. So. OK, thank you. Uh, one, one more question. Uh, worst case scenario, if, if the drought continues, what are the options? Do we have connectivity with MWRA? Do we have to reach out or do we have to do some 
and something else? Well, the first thing would be to um, implement further restrictions, which is eliminate the outdoor non essential water use, um, do everything we can to, to meet the demand and make sure that the demand that's not uh, non essential. As far as interconnections, our situation is that those connections mostly benefit the communities that are connected to. You'd have to pump from them to us. Uh, you'll notice that when you drive to, towards Norwood, you're going downhill the whole way. Um, so you've got that. No, are we ready? Like, do we do we need to do something for worst case scenario, or, or uh, is it available to us? That's that's my question. If there was some type of intermunicipal uh, cooperation, okay. we'd have to pump from them to us. Okay. That's, that's well, why don't you ask? Do we have a some sort of a soft intermunicipal agreement with Norwood? If that. I'm sure the town of Norwood would be more uh, more than happy to help us. Yeah, uh, I don't see a problem with that. And as Scott had said, we've helped them on at least three different occasions because the hydraulic drain line, unless our tanks are empty, we're going to all of our water is going to dump to Norwood. So the aqua pressure is significantly higher than this. It's like Scott said, they have a pump, but I'm sure we could. Uh, we have a good relationship with the town of Norwood, so I'm sure that it helps. Us. As far as, like Rick mentioned, the relationship, a lot of communities, they help each other. There's no antagonism there. Um, somebody needs a bite or this or that, or in this case, water. Uh, you do your best to assist in the community. And we've given water to Norwood um, and a limited scale Foxborough when they had a leak down here uh, McDonald's. So we do help each other out. Okay. The other thing is, you would start looking, sending people out in the middle of the night to find people who were using water. Right. I mean, that, right. Right. Shut right now. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's goes beyond just saying, telling everybody we really need you to do it. It's you can start going, finding people and telling them, you gotta stop or we've gotta shut you off. And it's also looking at, is this prevalent across the whole system or is it in one zone? Um, is there a leak somewhere that we're not aware of at a catch basin, a culvert, or, you know, a bridge? Somewhere that um, there's a use that's not accounted for. So there's more to it than just, you know, it's getting low. That's, we've got to start really focusing on what we can do to, to, uh, to solve it. But there would, just a question for the people viewing. I asked uh, Rick Matson, who's the director of public works for Walpole, who's got 35 years experience in water and sewer operations about Norwood. Is that, do we need a pump to, to if, if you, turn the connection in order, we need a pump in other words, yes. you can't just open the gate. So MWA has a couple of products um, that were ongoing that they were concerned they wouldn't be able to uh, um, do the work they had to do, changing valves, and uh, they approached other communities just to be sure. So all those hydro grade lines, they were looked at. So we know that the conditions that exist and what elevations our tank would have to be at to assist even them um, and what we would require. And it, it really is, uh, skewed in their favor as far as receiving water. There are various other things we could do. We could remove our tanks from service, cut down on the hydraulics, and then make more water. <clears throat> so there are several things we can do to trick the system into thinking one side needs it more than the others. It, it wouldn't be uh, prudent to, to explore maybe getting a pump installed in the event there's an emergency uh, amenity to the system? That's something where you could have a temporary connection that you pump through. Doesn't necessarily mean we have to construct a, okay, a pump station at the town line that would sit could there. Could be a mobile pump, in other words. Yes. Yes. That's what we've done in the past, is a fire truck, but it's only been for a short duration. They had something that they needed water for wasn't set up for, uh, you're going to park a, a fire truck there for days, uh, then you'd have to do right. something. Fire truck can make pressure, can't make water. Okay. All right. All right. So that would move us uh, to the uh, procedures for final bills. Uh, final bill process. 
was this, this was, uh, whose request was this? Was this uh, Maraski was complaining oh, okay. about it. So we've listed the procedures of what we do. My thought at the time was they're paying for that piece of paper from us and we charge 75. How we do it seems to me is our business um, and the process we're doing apparently works fine. Do you have anything to add to that, Scott? Or? No, the request was made to, to have it outlined what the procedure yeah. was as far as entry and who reads it and this defines that. You want me to read this or we'll just make this available to Mr. Moraski or? I think he's carry? already got his uh, final reading. I don't think he needs any more, but. Yeah. Well, I think just to clarify, um, <clears throat> the um, sell of a property uh, and requesting a final water bill uh, reading and a report from the town that's a legal document that they can record and use as a contractual item to help them close on a sale of their property. Um, the, uh, typically the, the realtor or the seller will make the request and um, we're spelling out here that they've got to identify the, the date that they want this for and the, uh, their coordinates for an address and uh, contact person, phone numbers, etc. cetera. Uh, and it takes our department two to three days prior to that date to mobilize different activities, uh, including reading of the meter and uh, we prepare a final bill now. The, the reading, the actual act of reading the meter um, can happen by a staff person or if apparently if the town trusts the, the realtor or the property owner to get the right number off the meter, they can report it themselves and expedite, speed up the process they as well. They request a, or we request a picture of the meter. So they can take a picture of the tiles and we can read them so there's no inaccuracy, it's, it's read correctly and it lines up with what we have. Okay, so the town does get a picture of the meter to make sure the accuracy. And then it's just a matter of expeditiously processing that paperwork and getting the material to the uh, homeowner so they can conduct their legal business with the closing. Uh, and there's some provisions here if there's an elderly person or et cetera. Uh, people uh, might have some limitations and also with COVID that would in, infringe on the uh, the timing and the process and how this might be collected. So the town has provided the maximum flexibility to accommodate the achievement of a, a timely final bill uh, preparation for the homeowner. Uh, and now uh, the process is based on a uh, assessment of the work as be $75. And I guess the question was, uh, individual was thinking, because you report the meter amount that they were entitled not to pay $75. Uh, <laughs> so we're providing a, an important document to them. And we have to, that gets billed, goes into the billing system as, a, as well as the information here. It uh, seems to me that of all the costs of selling a home, this is probably one of the uh, cheapest uh, things and can hold up the whole process. Uh, I don't see right. any reason to change anything. Yeah, I, th I think in the case, uh, the gentleman that uh, made the inquiry was of the belief that that charge was just for the a physical person coming to the house. He didn't really think about everything else that was in that basket of work and activity to generate the report. So. Yeah, yeah, I think my understanding was that uh, whether the, it's a physical or digital or, you know, reading, the final bill itself uh, is a process which, which is a cost. Whether the cost is high or low, that is a different question. But the process can be digital. We don't need to be, you know, taking picture or sending it or if they have a view, it can be directly taken. Um, whether the cost 75 is high or low, that's, I don't, I don't know because we don't know the whole cost of the billing system. And the second thing is, this fees is there from last, I'd say, five to ten years. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, 
it's you not know, that we increased it and then somebody all of a sudden came in. You'd, you'd be surprised just to have somebody write a letter, what it costs, you know, to get send it out. It, it, it sometimes just boggles your mind. It, it wouldn't surprise me that $75 is a bargain based when you start adding all the, the stuff that you have to do. And so so um, is this a new uh, documented document itself that we didn't have before in place, these, this actual page? It's the, it's the procedure that's been followed, but this is clearly right now. Now we put it on, it's we, on, we defined it. So do we want to adopt this? Uh, or just uh, say du duly noted and this get I think it's a duly noted because <coughs> things change. We, you know, yeah. we changed the way we read meters. Uh, so now somebody doesn't have to do step six or whatever. Um, maybe the uh, for real estate uh, transactions, an email is acceptable in the future or whatever. That's why I'm suggesting. You're paying $75 for this document. How we get, produce it, whatever, is irrelevant, and, and probably the process will change. Certainly, COVID changed the uh, process, and who knows, maybe monkeypox will uh, cause us to change it. Yeah, at, at the point, really, I, uh, the, the, the initial incident is that it isn't the human contact that's the important component of this process. It's, it's capturing the number and then doing all the work to produce a legal document. I think if anybody asks, we can say, here's the steps. And they're the steps we use today, and certainly five years from now, the steps have changed. If anybody asks, we'd be able to explain it. So. Okay, anything else? I was gonna suggest maybe we make a motion to confirm the $75 final water bill fee, whether it's read by the somebody from the department or whether it's a realtor or a homeowner. That's what it is. I would suggest um, doing that at a rate hearing. Okay. That would be the time to do it. So if we want to make a note. Well, it's still part of the rate. I'm just saying we yeah. confirm yeah. that, you know. Well, now we have any own questions. We have the document. Right. We have the page to show them. What and the that's reasonable is. to see because we may find that it costs us a hundred dollars to uh, do it. But I, you know, in the past, that would be one of the things that we identified a, a rate hearing. Okay, very good. We'll move on then. Discussion items, uh, customer care issues. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, this, this was to just track the customer care issue, but I think we, we do get uh, customer emails and all this. And, uh, are we tracking it? That's continuously documented. Anytime somebody uh, calls in with but a as concern. A metrics, not, not, as a, not as an email or something, like as a metrics. Do you get report for yourself? For a report for ourselves? Yeah. We, we know how many calls have come in. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, that's, that's good. Um, that's this is, is both the, at the collector's office as well as the water de sewer department office because their uh, water inquiries go end up going to both places. People have a question about their bill. They think, oh, let me talk to the collector. No, they, they can answer. Or, or no, you got to go upstairs for you know that particular. Are most calls billing related? Are they what? Are most calls billing related? Uh, they, they can be. That, that's usually a trade with people. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, high bills are a good incentive to call. So yes, for well, water quality, which triggers us to go out and say, find it, but there's a problem. It's the town's problem. It's not our problem. Um, so water quality is another big one. <coughs> and the other reason I was asking is that let's say if you are demo with the, some vendors, they, they will have some tools to you know basically direct the customer. You know your, your staff can direct them or go go to this place and look your uses or look which day what you how much water you used. Um, so I think uh, if you have this number, that's good. We can see whether. We can support the same with the new tools which we are looking. Okay. <clears throat> now that number three is availability of state and MWRA funds. <clears throat> so, 
Yeah. As far as like, since the last meeting, there's been no change. And I went as far as availability of funds. Um, that's something we'll continue to see more on. I don't think about And that, would you perceive that to be for things like the uh, the filter system or what would be the funds available for? The, the first thing that comes to mind for me is PFAS. Um, dealing with that, that's going to be an issue for everyone. <coughs> and I see that's just something that's getting bigger on the horizon. So I have no doubt that there'll be something in the works to address it when it comes up. There, there was an infrastructure bill from the state. Uh, it was on top of the Harappa funds. Uh, so that also was supporting water and sewer projects. Mm -hmm. So we should try to find out whether something is available there for us. So that's, that's the reason I asked for that particular infrastructure bills from the governor. How do we find out that this, uh, the state is coming up with a new grant, or uh, is, do we well, get, does our, all the communities get notified, or is it our state uh, rep, uh, and, you know, state senator lets you know, it's or? usually the Water Works Associations. Right. It's with, so. The or Mass Water Works, we okay. send out an email, so and these state funds are available. All right, the so. The vast majority of them, so for each question, a lot of them are very small, yeah. very competitive. Um, some of them you spend $80,000 to get a $70,000 grant. Um, the, the bigger ones like the SRF where they have uh, have zero or low percentage uh, percent interest, those are the ones that you probably want to go out to the Scott's point. When the PFAS becomes a, a major issue, we'll probably take that avenue. Uh, in terms of MWRA availability, uh, as you know, Bill, and been involved in it before, uh, and said, and said, you guys were to town meeting, they have the loan slash grant program for I&I. &I. Um, we still have two allocations, I think, sitting up there, uh, 12 and 13 and something like that, basis 12 and 13. One of them is a 75% grant, 25% loan. The other is 100% loan. Each of the allocations, I believe, is 810000 um, that money is exclusively for inflow and infiltration. Can't be used for anything else. Right now, our, our I and I funds are pretty healthy, so at this point, I don't think we need to take advantage of that. But that money doesn't go away. That's there. So if we decide four or five years from now that we want to use it, it's there. It's not given to another community. It's earmarked specifically for water. For, for sewer, I think we have a lot of projects which are in pipeline. Does MWR give uh, funding and grants for sewer projects? The, the two allocations that we have remaining are $810,000. Is that for water or for, for, for the sewer? sewer. Oh, for sewer, okay. Yeah, that's true. And it has to be for uh, remediation work, removal. Of Not for the new, new pipe? Right, we can't extend sewers with it. We can repair existing sewers. Extensive. So what, what are the loan options for new pipe, new sewer lines? Uh, new pipe through the MWRA, I don't think we have any options. Okay. Uh, through the state revolving fund account, SRF, there are probably some options up there. Okay. okay. And the last one would be uh, ARPA. So as far as ARPA, um, the board had requested that the select board be um, notified of what the commission's priorities were as far as the ARPA money. Uh, that was done. So those prioritizations have been uh, presented to them. As far as anything to do with that, there is nothing beyond that. Okay. So you submitted four projects on the water side, correct? Yep. We put our and, and one on the sewer side? We put our test three plus. So the Willis membranes, the cleaning of the raw water lines, yep. uh, was the redundant water line, the yes. plus that one, yep. and there was one other one. So as okay. Scott said, um, those are still currently under review. So you have a five-year capital plan, and, and this upcoming year, 
all of those improvements are listed on your capital plan. So as a board, you need to make a decision off or aside, whether it's funded through our part, rates, or retained earnings, you need to make a decision as to what improvements you want to move forward for, for this upcoming fall and the coming year. All right, we had, uh, I believe the warrant yeah, closes. Jeff had, an, had a motion about that. We, we set priorities of three uh, items and right. sent right. a letter. Right, I understand that, but <clears throat> I just, if, if the select board were to uh, to fund one of one of your improvements through opera, my question, I guess, is what do you want to do with the other three? Do you still want to move forward with those, or that's the decision we need to make? Because as Bill said, the uh, warrant closes. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they have. It's like mid August. Mid, mid August. That's so, so. We'd have to say yes. We want. Um, it might be skate a phase three, and put that on the warrant. You, usually there'd be, might be two articles. One, if borrowing's involved, you want to separate that article because you need a two-thirds vote. If it's something coming from retained earnings, that can be a, a separate one because a, just a, a majority vote would be sufficient. So that's so, why. Right. We you typically have four articles each in each ball uh, Two for borrowing, one on each side of water and sewer, and two for the use of retained earnings. Water and sewer again. So the I know I know Jody's waiting to hear on the uh, certification of the retained earnings. We don't have those numbers as of yet. So I guess once we get those numbers, you can make a more informed decision as to what direction you want to go in. Um, keep that in the back of mind. What, regardless of cost, these improvements are you know improvements that need to be done. So whether you postpone for a year or borrow this year, just just keep those in mind. Well, could I ask, uh, from your perspective, the selectmen, I mean, are they dragging their feet on the ARP? I mean, is it? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think they. I don't think they're dragging their feet. They have a lot of requests. It's a very limited pool of money. Um, to my knowledge, they've only awarded one thing in ARPA recently. I think there was some money for the old town hall, the old police station, to uh, take care of some existing structural deficiencies to prevent the building from further deteriorating. Um, other than that, I don't think they've made any decisions. However, they've made political statements saying how important water quality was and to make sure that the infrastructure was uh, enhanced. But we're kind of in blind man bluff if we don't know what direction they're going with. No, the I, I understand that, though. I, I know. No. no, I understand that you can't make a decision as to what you want to do in terms of borrowing or using retained earnings. I understand that. Yeah, but, but, but you're right. Yeah, 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 but I, I would say that we would want for the uh, the filters for uh, the Willis plant because I think Scott you've told us that if you don't order them today so you're you not it, it's to, like a wait and it's 14, 15 months up. yeah so and put it on and if the upper comes in that's fine we don't uh, it, we don't dip in in that case with the the amount of money that's what it costs that's a borrowing article anyways. You just don't borrow the money, and uh, that gets rescinded later on. But I think it's important that we have that one at least on the uh, fall town meeting warrant. And you know, once the uh, warrant closes, which is probably less than a month away, um, the Finco uh, not only the FinCom, but you've been on the capital budget. That immediately starts. They start going looking at all the capital, and we'd have to be able to present. Yes, the board voted. You know, uh, five zero zero to support. Um, well, capital capital budget committee is meeting August twenty third. Via Zoom. Well, so see, but, but the rub is, Bill, and you know, it's the negotiate. I mean, by forcing us with the arbitrary date of closing a warrant, uh, we're forced into a position on something that, that if if they would give us the decision about about the filters, 
which is what we really want. We probably say, we'd like to know for, hear from you before the warrant closes what you're going to do on this because it's our number one priority. If, they, if they're successful, they can negotiate us into trying to borrow an account for everything and getting none of the ARPA funds for sewer and water, which is wrong. Well, so, you know, I don't want to be put in a position we're going to fund everything without any ARPA when ARPA was supposed to be for infrastructure. I understand. <clears throat> I just, uh, given the amount of money. And, and, and they open, they open, excuse me, and they open and close the warrant whenever they feel like it. So there's no, the date in August means nothing. When the selectman wants something, they'll open it a day before town meeting and close it. They don't care. So, well, I mean, it's not like, that's not the end of the earth. So, uh, my my <clears throat> suggestion is that we come up with the list of projects for capital right. spending, which is separate than the ARPA funded projects. The two rate point needs to be the same list. I think it's the same list. And I'm particularly concerned, you know, it's one thing about getting the raw water lines clean. Um, we, we've postponed that. We have a, a situation. That we get. So, so hypothetically, if, if the select board votes to give you the, the funds for the membranes at the lowest point, right. my question is, what do you want to do as a board with the other three? Do you right. still want to move forward? That, that's the only thing I'm asking. Independence, you know, our program. In general, we do. Yeah, I think audience, without right. But my, my concern is is that, you know, I understand what you're saying. If we say, oh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, borrow the money, or, oh, well, we don't have to, the board, select board say, oh, we don't have to worry about that. They're going to do it. My and concern I, is I some of I those, are, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. But it, when you look at the some of the others, we can post, we can wait more. I don't think we can wait on the uh, placing the order for the filters with without risking a can't place that we won't be able to run the uh, Willis plant, uh, you know, at least fully because, you know. Or not at all, because regardless of the source of funding, all. it needs to be replaced. That, that's my concern, and I. I well, if we put it in the water, we should send a letter now to the selectmen saying that we were hoping to hear from you on the, uh, you know, on the membranes. Well, and we, we're putting it on the budget because of the time lag Right. Uh, uh, fulfilling that project that we don't want to lose a uh, critical time for the, for the department to be operating you know, under. You know, well, I'd staff. like to see on our next meeting, which should be in the first two weeks of uh, August, and I believe that it will be before the uh, warrant closes, and you're right, they can change the dates and whatever, that we have, here's what we want on, uh, um, on the uh, warrant, and I think at least the uh, the Willis plant uh, filters has to be on there, and there are others we can say, you know, and I, I think it's, I don't think the selectmen are going to say, ah, they're, they're uh, you know, already committed to spending, oh, let's spend that money elsewhere that we were going to give them. But you're right, it's possible, but I don't think that it's planned. August 8th and August 22nd are the next two meetings. Well, then I would say on the 8th that uh, we should have a list of his, what, and Scott, you know, you, you know things that you need. Is there a dump truck or something that's uh, ready on its last, uh, you know, wheels or whatever that won't make it till the spring? You know, we got to know that also. So we can take a vote saying, here's the projects, and Mr. Chairman, when you go to the uh, capital budget and FinCom, you'll be able to say that the vote was whatever it was. All right. Uh, any other business? I'll we'll make a motion. A motion. Okay. We have a second. <laughs> Come on, Pradeep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four okay. zero. Thank you.